Hello, people. Okay, so today what we thought we'd do, you've probably seen, or hopefully you've seen Joe's video on his long-term review of the Civic. We're going to do a long-term review of my Mini. Um, and I'll take long-term with a pinch of salt. I've had it two years. Um, for me, that's long-term. I've had like eight, nine cars in 10 years. Um, and I've had this one too. So by my standards, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to kind of talk you through like good things about the car, things I like, things I don't like, um, little niggly problems, cover off some questions, and hopefully for anyone looking to buy this car and, and wants to know what it's like to have for a period of time, be it two years, three years, um, then I hope this is helpful for you. So I'll start with some questions. I'll keep it really, really simple. It is a 2011 Mini JCW. Um, it's 247 bhp. Uh, let's get the big numbers out of the way first, you know. Um, so it has had a remap. That was done by a group called WG Motorworks. I will pop the video somewhere up the top. Um, and that's where we just cover the remap in filming purposes, which is quite good. Um, it has a Wagner intercooler. A lot of these were done by before me, so that's good then. If it's not, then sorry. <laughs> uh, it sounds good, that's all I know. Keeps it cool. Um, we've got Bill Scene coilovers, so that's on again another modification that's done before I owned it. AEM induction kit and GP2 sort of style diffuser. I'm not sure it's a genuine one. Um, and the orangey or orange G wing, um, which is pretty cool. A little bit wobbly, I have to say, but we'll come on to mods and stuff. But that's kind of the basic specs 2011. Um, so over 10 years old now, but still in pretty good shape, I think. So I've always wanted one of these new BMW Minis since I saw that terrible Italian job film. I mean, I, I kind of like it, but I know it's not the Italian job film that people talk about. Um, but that's kind of what made me want one. Um, I really like the shape and the new sort of quirky characteristics they've added to the car. So that's what we need to go for one really. And um, yeah, no regrets. Uh, apart from that, it's just, I wanted something that handled well. At the time, my commute when I bought the car was country roads and I really wanted something that was nice and tight. You could fling around, it would grip any corner. Uh, the car I had before this, um, as you might've seen in one of our previous videos, was a GT86. Now, this, sorry to offend anyone, I don't, it wasn't for me. Um, nice cars, lovely to look at, and I know a lot of people say they're fun to drive. I just didn't find that personally. Um, so I wanted something I could chuck about, chuck about, chuck about uh, a little bit more, uh, which the Mini definitely does. Um, I also wanted something that was turbocharged, which the GT86 didn't have. So to have that kind of instant response, I don't really feel there's a lot of turbo lag in these. Um, I'd be really interested to know if people in the comments think there is a turbo lag. Um, but for me, it's great. Like it's a very instantaneous response, and uh, I enjoy the turbo a lot, which is good. Makes a nice noise too. Um, and yeah, bit of a funny story, but I got to the point where now, like, I'm getting a bit old, um, and I wanted a car that I didn't really have to modify too much. So the nice thing about this car was it had most of the modifications that I wanted to do done. All I've really done, and we'll cover some of the mods later uh, in a bit more detail, is all I've really done is remap it. Um, most of it was done in terms of the things I would have done to it had I bought a standard JCW, it would all been done already, so that was nice. Um, and yeah, like I say, the main reason to try and get away from the GTA 6, which I didn't like so much. Oh, <laughs> quite a funny story, actually. When I went to go and test drive the car, I had a call on the way to say that I think basically the ECU had failed. So it had all kinds of lights on the dash um, saying it needs to be on the ramp and inspected instantly. Um, but it did drive. Uh, indicators, lights, nothing worked. So all I could really do was find out how it drove. Um, and they promised me that they would sort that before I picked the car up, which they did. Um, so yeah, all I could really do was put my foot down an industrial estate because it wasn't really fit to go on the road with no indicators or lights working. So I took it around a quick industrial estate um, near the dealership and I thought, well, let's just see what it's got, put my foot down um, and I was just amazed at 
how quickly it took off. Um, that, like I said earlier, that instant torque from the turbo, um, I just fell in love really. And it sounds really silly, um, but this car's got a really, really good turning circle and I loved that. Um, I liked how I could just get it to a point where I could just swing it around and spin it around and lean the mini, no surprise, great turning circle, so it's very welcome. And it's going to sound really simple, but it's so easy to drive. Um, you don't have to hoon it round. It is a bit of a, what's the best way of putting it, a bit of a boy racer's car, I guess, if you, if you had to put any kind of stereotype on it. Um, but you don't have to drive it like that. With the sport mode turned off, it's pretty placid, actually, I tend to find, um, unless you really put your foot down. Um, so that, that's quite nice. You can just sort of poodle around. You don't have to be a bit of a yorvo in it. Um, it's really good on fuel. Uh, and one thing I have to say that which not a lot of people really say about these cars in particular, especially this one with the N14 engine, is it's really reliable. Um, it's the most reliable car I've had, which is uh, not something I can say too often. Uh, it did have some problems when I first bought it with the valve stem seals. If you've seen the other video we've got about problems with my Mini, um, a bit of a clickbait in hindsight, but it, for me it shows that Really, since then, I've had no problems, um, apart from one which we'll see a video about shortly. I don't want to spoil that for you, um, but we might come on to it later in this video. We'll see. Um, but yeah, over two years, I've had barely any problems, and anything I have had has been pretty minor. So, good for that. There isn't much. Um, it's the best car I've had. I love it to bits. Um, it's a car I wanted since I was a kid, as I said earlier, so there's not really that much I don't like about it, but the main one, and I'd love to know if other people in the comments have this problem too, is it's really, really expensive to insure. So I'll tell you, I don't really care about telling you my personal problem, personal life, right? I'm 30 years old. Um, I have got 10 years, no claims. I haven't got any speeding, bumps, accidents, anything on my record at all. Um, good little boy. But I am paying about £1,300 a year on this, genuinely. Um, now I have declared all the mods and I know with a remap, lower suspension, loud exhaust and whatnot, you do pay a little bit extra for that, sure. Um, but for me, 10 years no claims, that's an awful lot of money. Um, so do make sure if you're looking at these cars that you do get an insurance quote first and make sure you're okay with that. Um, because the car is actually quite quite good to run, you know, it's good on fuel. It's really good on fuel um, for like a sporty little hatchback. Um, so that's one of the things I don't like is the insurance price is ugly. Um, and the older I get and the more I want to think about, you know, buying a house and stuff, um, I'll have to think about these things. I have to think about whether I want to still afford, to, you know, if I still want to pay that kind of insurance. Um, so we'll see. Uh, another thing I don't particularly enjoy is the ride is really stiff, really, really stiff. It's horrible. Um, again, I'm old. I'm getting, I'm 30. And every time I get out of this car, I'm like, oh. So from that perspective, I would like something a little bit softer maybe in the future. Um, I'm not going to change it on this car. Like, um, You do get benefits, which is the coilovers are stiff, but they're great around corners. Like this car handles like nothing else I've ever seen before. Um, but yeah, it is stiff. And to add on to that, another thing that I don't like is this car is just so low. It's so low. It scrapes on every speed bump, every little pothole, any little dip in the road, scrape, you name it. I've even got where I live at the moment, because it's a bit of a parking nightmare to be honest with you, but I've got an allocated space, uh, which I'm in now. And there's a little parking post and it folds down when you reverse the car in. But it must be about that much clearance when it's folded down. And the parking post isn't big tiny so I have to be really really careful about scraping the front of it and one last point which is a little bit silly one but really it, it does bother me is people want to race it all the time the amount of times I see people like right on my backside trying to egg me on to get me put my foot down on the art you know what? I'm just, I want to go to Morrison's I want to go get some food <laughs> like, leave me alone um, but you do find it a lot like it is a bit of a you know it's quite a glary looking car I think for a mini um, and people 
look at the car and I do want to race it and I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered, especially if they something quicker. I don't want to be embarrassed. Mm. Uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, what I don't like and what I hate, that's it. It's quite a small list, but hopefully that covers it. On these cars, something to really look out for is oil starvation. Um, now, again, I've probably covered this in one of our other videos, but you know, two years on, it's still a problem to be honest with you. The dipstick is really hard to read. You can get other dipsticks which are easier to read, but for me, this dipstick, still to this day, I struggle with it, I really do. Um, it's the same color as oil. And sometimes it shows it's got loads of oil in when it hasn't actually got any. It's just, I don't know. I find it difficult personally. Um, I've seen other people in comments say they find ways around it and so on. Um, some people have even modified their dipstick. Maybe that's something I need to do. Um, but that is something to look out for is just check your oil level regularly. Um, I think I read somewhere that it burns about a thousand liters per, sorry, a thousand liters? It burns about one liter per 1,000 miles. So, you know, that's quite a lot and you do need to keep it topped up and checked. Um, another part of the common issues to look at with these is the valve stem seals. Again, in one of my previous videos, you'll notice that when I first bought the car, that was a problem I had very early on, was the valve stem seals were uh, past their best, let's say. So it was a little bit smoky when pulling away from sort of traffic lights and so on. I say a little bit very smoky. So something to think about is the valve stem seals and just, you know, that's one of the common issues I have seen. And the other one, which is the problem I have now, so I, I did kind of say earlier I wouldn't really touch on it, but here we are. Um, this car right here, right now, is struggling to start. Um, we will do another video on that, what the problem is, but the problem is essentially the high pressure fuel pump. Now this is very, very common on these. Um, I don't quite know what it is, I think they just wear, um, I mean this car has done now 103,000 miles. So it is getting to a point, you know, where things start to need doing. Um, like that so maybe it's just seals inside the fuel pump I don't know I'm no expert if someone can tell me in the comments please um, would love to know why they fail um, but yeah it's the high pressure fuel pump for me that is the problem I've got at the moment so it does eventually start and once it starts and once the car is warm it will start first time every time you know like it's not got any problems but from a cold start um, you will see in the other video which we'll cover it in more detail it's um, a bit problematic so uh, really apart from that, that's the main thing, just keep an eye on oil starvation, um, make sure that engine is running well. I know some people who have gone to see these have done a compression test, worth doing if you've got the right equipment I'd say, um, and providing the person you're buying a car off is happy for you to do that, or if it's a garage, see if they can do one for you before you pick it up. Um, but yeah, not too many real issues, I, I genuinely think they're quite reliable. Um, like I touched on earlier, really, it's great on fuel. Um, the tax is kind of average, sort of fast-ish hatchback tax. I think it's 250 quid a year, maybe. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm sorry if it's wrong. Um, but the main one is the insurance. It's really, really uncomfortable. Um, and I've just moved to a, let's just say, a different area than where I was living before. Um, and the insurance went up tenfold. So, great. thanks for that. Um, so yeah, that's something to think about, is just get insurance quotes and make sure you're happy with what it'll be. Um, but like I say, I'm, I'm paying over a grand at the moment, so yeah. For me, the N14 engine, which this has, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. That's just my personal experience. I know some people have had horror stories. I'm sorry if you're one of those people. Um, for me, I think I'm one of the lucky ones. It Maybe I was slightly fortunate to have a bit of an engine rebuild um, when I first bought the car with the valve stem seals. You know, we had the head skimmed, everything like that, um, when all that work was done. So I have been quite lucky in that respect that when it failed, it failed in warranty. Um, but really since then, it's been, it's been brilliant. Um, there's not been any, any problem. Just keep it topped up with oil. Um, and don't be put off by N14, just make sure it's had reasonable work done, look at the paperwork, um, make sure it's had you know things like the timing chain done as well, um, that's very important. And something that I think was quite good in this car when I bought it was it had a decoke done, 
where they run the almond shells, they blast almond shells through the engine to clean it out and get rid of all the carbon. Uh, that's been really, really helpful um, to like make sure this car runs well, you know, 10 years later and still gets the horsepower it should do. So yeah, and obviously just, you know, normal stuff like check for any smoke when it's idling, uh, when it's cold, all things to look out for. Um, but really, like I said earlier, it's a pretty reliable car. So um, apart from that, you know, look at forums, there's so many Facebook pages. If you do get one with the N14 engine, there's a really good page called the N14 <laughs> Survivors Group for people that haven't been as lucky as me. Um, but they're great at helping any problem they've got. They were the ones that told me it was the fuel pump in this car that was going when I put a video up of it not starting. So, yeah, you know, like with any car, just have a look around at the forums that are available to you um, because the mini ones are really, really great and helpful. But we have the Wagner or Wagner intercooler. <laughs> I can't speak German, believe it or not. Um, it's got the AEM induction kit, which is fantastic. Um, sounds really nice, nice little grunt from the engine. It's got a Miltec sports cap, um, Milstein coilovers, and a remap from WG Motorworks. I think that's it. I think, I mean, to be honest with you, Joe, te <laughs> Joe seems to remember the mods better than I do. Um, but like I say, they're the ones I had done. Uh, what I say I had done were, that were done before I bought the car the only one I've done personally is the remap uh, so in terms of my personal favorite out of all of those I'd probably say it, it is actually the induction kit because it makes a really nice note and it's nice to have that the bonnet scoop has a purpose a lot of bonnet scoops on these mini Cooper S's or JCW's are just um, there for aesthetic reasons aesthetical reasons and um, with this, it, it actually has a purpose. It you know lets the cold air in and it scoops it down to the um, the air filter. So that's really cool. Um, so very very happy with that. So it's probably my favourite. Um, and I like the sports cat as well. Um, these cars do pop a bit when in sports mode. Um, I don't know if the sports cat helps with that, if or if they did them before. Like I said, previous owner did all this, so I don't know. Um, but it does make a nice noise with that. So yeah. Really, I haven't got anything planned. Um, I'm so happy with this car the way it is. Uh, really, I just want to maintain it. I want to put money into maintaining it, making sure it will last me another couple of years. Um, making sure it makes sense to maintain it and to keep it, as well as a big factor with life changing the way it does. Um, so nothing really planned. Something I would maybe like to do is the double din. I've seen people turn them into Apple CarPlay. So if I do keep this car for a bit longer, it'd be nice to have Apple CarPlay in the car um, just to modernise it a little bit. I actually really, really like the head unit in this. Um, one of my favourite things about the car, which I probably should have said already, but I didn't. Um, but I love the head unit. I've got the one with a nice big screen um, and a sat-nav built in. And the sat-nav is a complete write-off 10 years later. Um, it's absolutely no good at all, but to have Bluetooth audio in a 2011 car is quite nice. Um, and the menus are nice and things like the uh, trip computer and the car diagnostic system it's all got built in I actually think it's really ahead of its time um, so really really like that and the whole it's basically a BMW iDrive system but dressed up as mini so yeah that's good and yeah so maybe one day I'll look at changing that out for Apple CarPlay but I've got to do some research about how to do that just, like I say just have a good look around there is good ones out there um, if you can get one with the N18 engine, then I'd probably say it's less risky, but don't be put off by N14 and if you know you see one in the spec that you really like. Um, because for me, I think they are, they're good. They're good cars if they're looked after, but it all depends about the owner you buy it from um, and whether they've looked after it. So yeah, apart from that, there's not really too much to look out for. It all depends on what spec you want. Um, something I probably should have said uh, is, <laughs> In terms of favourite things, I like these seats. These seats are pretty rare. Um, I know I covered that in one of my older videos, um, but considering this isn't the most comfortable car for a ride, um, make sure you know you've got nice comfy seats in there because uh, the mini seats can be a little bit, I don't know, basic. Um, sorry if you've got one of those, um, but these are very, very comfy Recaros, which is lovely. And I was very lucky to find those because these are pretty rare, I understand. So. Um, yeah, just make sure you look out for something that suits you. That's the main thing. Um, going from a Toyota GT86 to this, 
I had a lot of people saying, Why are you getting rid of sports car for a mini? Just included. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something to really consider is just make sure it's the right car for you um, I knew that I probably should have got one of these um, instead of the Toyota and I kind of knew straight away I just kind of forgot about it to be honest um, but yeah love minis always have and if you do then this is the car for you it really is and that's it I mean I guess we'll see uh, what the future looks like for this car um, I'll continue to try and look after it best I can um, we'll go from there but in terms of summary thank you for watching I hope this is useful if you have any experience with these cars and think there's something I've not covered or something that might be useful for you then please say in the comments um, and we'll have a look and see how we can respond and if there's anything I didn't add then please point it out if anything I said incorrectly tell me it's fine I'm not always right um, but yeah, just if you do get one, go for it. Like I, lo I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it's so much fun to drive. So rewarding. Every time I get in it, I love it. Um, get lots of nice compliments, head turns, everything. So it's a good little car. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'll stop going on. Leave you to your day. Um, if you do like this video, please like and subscribe. Hopefully there'll be some more mini content, certainly about the fuel pump coming up. Um, and then we can catch up then. Bye, guys. Au revoir.